So I've spun as much as I want to spin on my spindle, and I have this pretty little single thread right here. The thing about it is, though, as soon as I release pressure on it, it's going to kink up on itself because all we've been doing is twisting it. And this is where plying comes in. And the concept of plying is to take two strands that have been spun in a similar way and to then spin them around one another going the opposite direction. So here are two strands that have been spun in the same direction. And if I just give them a little twist in the opposite way, the helix around one another. And this gives us a plied yarn. And I'll show you plying in more detail. And it's time to take these singles off. You have a few choices here. You can simply wrap it into a ball. But what I like to do is to take a little paper tube. I made this one. And I just secured it with scotch tape. And I like to wrap my singles around the tube. I find that this is an easy way of controlling the singles. If we just have them in a ball, you can make it work that way, but I find that the singles tend to get out of control. The ball rolls away from you. I just think this is an easier way of going about it. Here's a tube with the singles already wound on nice and neat. It's time to make a makeshift Lazy Kate, and I can't take credit for this idea. I actually got this from the makers of my Rio Grande wheel, and this is how I ply off of my Rio Grande wheel, and it works just as well for a spindle. I have two tubes. Each one has some singles that I've spun, and I have a very beat up old shoe box that's been with me for many years, and two knitting needles. So I'm going to skewer my shoe box with my knitting needles and take each one of my singles and place each one onto a knitting needle and I'll have a nice easy way to control my singles. You can actually purchase a wooden Lazy Kate which is essentially the same configuration it's just um, much prettier. So it's time to ply and plying on a drop spindle can be a little tricky. It's easier on a wheel, I find, but it's still absolutely possible. And I'm going to take each of my strands from my singles that I've spun earlier. I'm going to feed them through the loop, just like I did when I started spinning. I'm going to hold on to them. And this time, I'm spinning counterclockwise. Whatever direction I spin, it has to be the opposite direction I spun my singles. Otherwise, everything is going to fall apart. So here I go. I'm spinning now towards my knee, the opposite direction, and I'm going to let the twist build up. I'm going to hold on to my two singles and let the counterclockwise twist literally helix the two singles together. I'm going to do that again for you. I'm spinning counterclockwise. I'm holding my two strands with even tension and allowing the twist to travel up into the strands, just like that. I'm going to pull out and then let the plying come in. I'm going to draw out and then ply. Draw out and then ply. This way I know that I've got nice neat plying going on. So singles get twisted up a lot because they're twisted fiber and you'll find that they'll want to tangle with one another, they'll catch on stuff. So what I recommend when you're plying is it's your left hand that's going to pull out I've got my finger between the strands here, and it helps me create a nice even tension between my hands. And as long as I know what's between my hands is neat, I know that my plying is going to be neat as well. So look, as the spindle turns counterclockwise, you can see the single strands beginning to twist around one another. And this is what will give us our finished yarn.